Hey, what is up guys, Seth here, and with new Noble Knights dropping, there is, uh, you know, a lot of hype about them, and I thought I would do a deck profile, the basic template of the deck, as well as, you know, the, I'll explain the choices that I've made. Um, there will also be a, an epic comeback duel uh, after I've explained the deck profile, so stay tuned for that. We've got three Noble Knight, uh, the normal monsters, we've got three Dristans, three Madrouts, one Bors, three... Uh, Gualchevads, one Honest, one Rescue Rabbit, two Karkar D, one Max C, and three Lady of the Lakes. For the spells, we've got Reinforcement Army, Violon Matter, Release Restraint Wave, one, uh, sorry, two Release Restraint Wave, one uh, March Force for Glory, although that's also called Pomp and Circumstance, which is just an awful name. We've got three No Arms of Destiny, one, uh, two Galatin, sorry, one Caliburn, one Excalibur, and one Arfu, Arfu, or whatever the fuck it's called. I'm not even going to try and pronounce them because TCG really suck with uh, these really stupid names. We've got one Bottomless Trap Hole, two Mirror Force, one Compulse, two Fiendish Chains. For the extra deck, we've got Scarred Warrior, uh, two of the Ignoble Knight of uh, High Launcelin, or whatever it is, um, one Utopia 1, which is number S339. Um, number 39 of Utopia, of course. You've got Omega, uh, Blade Armor Ninja, Korn, the number 101, Silent Owner's Arc Knight. We've got two of the, art, uh, you know, the XYZ, the King of the Noble Knights. I, I don't like pronouncing these names because they're awful. You've got one uh, Excalibur, Heroic Champion. You've got a uh, Star Lage, Paladynamo, and one Noble Swarm, uh, Beelzebeth, and Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy, as always. So, I'll explain why there's Scarred Warrior in here. You will only ever really need two of the ignoble monsters. Because if you've already got one on the field, and you should have one on the field, if you get one on the field, you should instantly have no Warms of Destiny on it, or uh, Excalibur, because it prevents targeting. No Warms of Destiny prevents it from getting destroyed once per turn by battle or by card effect. So it's, it's a really good card. But Scarred Warrior is just so good because in the sense that once per turn it can't be destroyed by battle and they can't attack your Ignoble Knight and they can't target any other warrior monsters for that matter. So it's just an amazing card to keep on the field if you've got a Lady of the Lake that's just floating in your hand and you've got nothing else to play. Bors is at 1 because whilst it has a good effect to add 1 to your hand and put 2 into your grave you don't want to do that more than once. You don't want to do that more than once. And, you know, he's not good if you can't get your uh, equip spells back onto the field or into your deck. The reason, the reason, sorry, that we're running, um, we're not running uh, this card, the Gal Gawain or whatever the hell his name is, is because it's just a, it's a minus one. The way I see it is it's a minus one. Even though you can instant XYZ because it's just like a, a uh, Kageto Kage. It's just not a good card when you can run three Lady of the Lakes and get the Synchro effect. Because the Synchro effect is just the bread and butter of the deck. It really is w what you need to have out at all times. So, that's the deck profile, guys. Um, stay tuned for the comeback and I'll explain it in a second. So, what's up, guys? I'm back again and th what you're seeing here is me playing the Noble Knights and on the opponent's side of the field um, he's running some sort of, um, you know, Gagaga, a rank 4 spam sort of deck with limited Barry's force. Now, the, the game starts out as you'd kind of expect, where he, he kind of bluffs what he's running. You know, I've got no idea what he's running. He's got that set, Mystical Tomato, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's just, you, what you want to do first is summon that normal monster. If you don't have Madrout in your hand, you want to summon that normal monster. If you've got Lady in the Lake in your hand, that's what you need to do. So Gagaga, uh, the Gagaga Magician comes out and he summons Goblin Burg. That's why I don't use Max C, because he could just stop right then. I was expecting the Goblin to work. So I use Max C on his limited Barry's Force, because I knew that what was coming was the Utopia Ray 5. He pops me, and he does a ton of damage there, and then he attacks directly. It's just, you know, that damage is just crazy. And um, I'm already down to like 3,600. As we go on, I draw into the Madrout, which is just great. But 
the first thing that I want to do is use Lady of the Lake because that's what happens as he comes back with Compulse and just bounces it right back to my hand so we're in trouble here, we're in really big trouble at this point I'm thinking I'm going to lose if he summons a monster unfortunately he doesn't have enough foresight so he decides to just attack and this is what pretty much gets me the win right here is because he didn't summon that Gagaga kid in his hand um, again this is where you want to summon something of value and what happens here is I want to pop his Utopia Ray 5 so he dark bribes and I draw a destiny draw that Galatin. Galatin equips and I'm able to pop the Utopia Ray 5 that really messes him up he's in trouble now and I do a ton of damage 2800 is not to be scoffed at so what he draws into here is one of those Gagaga wins and it's not really a great card the reason that he MSTs my Galatin is because he knows that if I re-equip it to my Dristan I'm going to have to pop a face up card which means Dristan is going to get popped which is just silly, you don't want to do that so I XYZ up into the Noble Arms uh, the, the King of the Noble Knights and I get both of my Noble Arms back then I use its effect and kill his uh, back row, his Gagaga shield it's looking pretty good at the moment so he draws that Gaga Re Revenge, which is just like premature burial, but it's more broken. And you know, this is kind of a misplay at my point because I thought that he would that Gaga kid would copy his level eight, and then he couldn't synchro, uh, he couldn't X Y Z. Instead, it copies the level after the Fiendish Chain resolves, so he X Y Z's up into a rank four. Now I'm at two thousand eight hundred attack here, which means if I attack him, he's just going to stop. He's just going to stop the attack. So what I decided to do instead was, I use noble uh, king of the noble knights effect to destroy my noble arms and then reattach things. Um, I destroy my own noble arms destiny and try to protect myself for as long as possible. I knew that he would attack that, and I knew I would be left with 200 uh, LP. I really am playing a dangerous game here, but I decide that you know it's for the best. Next up, I summon Bors and use uh, that card again. I use the, the uh, you know, to add to my hand, and I get a um, Galatin onto the Bors. I put um, whatever his name is, sorry, but I put his name in, into defense position. And the reason that he didn't negate the attack was he wasn't expecting Violent Matter. So I put three equip spells back into my deck and destroy his Utopia Ray 5. Therefore, he draws into absolutely nothing, and he can't take me out with Dark Hole because of no arms of destiny. So it just turns into a really great comeback, and now he's got absolutely nothing to take me out with, and nothing to stop me. He's got 2,200 LP left, and he quits. So that's the end of the duel, and it's such a great comeback. Comment, like, and subscribe, and this is Seth punching out.